Who been Yah Shalom? My name is Brother Gedaliah Ben Yah Shalom Shalom. Shalom, family. Once again, welcome to Yah Shalom Covenant Ministries, where we are a Bible teaching ministry, where we teach line upon line, precept upon precept. As always, go get your Bibles because we have a lot of information to cover. And again, I'm not here to convert anybody. I'm here to share information, and I hope that the information that we share with you will help you straighten and narrow your road to the walk of the. To the kingdom of Yahuwah. But before we get started, Akiah Galilee is going to give us an opening scripture. And that opening scripture will be read from Yahshua chapter 43, verses 9 through 12. Verse 9 reads, Let all the nations be gathered together and let the peoples be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses so they may be justified or let them hear and acknowledge this is the truth. You are my witnesses, says Yahuwah, and my servants whom I have chosen, so you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God or El form, nor will there be after me. I, even I, am Yahuwah, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and I have saved, and I have showed, and no strange God or El is among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says Yahuwah, that I am Yahuwah. May the reading of the word of Yahuwah have a blessing in Yahusha's name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, family. And again, welcome, welcome. And today what we want to deal with is Ten Tribes Doctrine, <clears throat> the sins of Ephraim and Yahuda. The Ten Tribes Doctrine, the sins of Ephraim and Yahuda, or Samaria and Jerusalem. And as I present this lesson today, brothers and sisters, here's what I know and understand uh, is the base on ten tribes doctrine is where they talk about the lost tribes, the ten lost tribes. Technically, they're not lost. They're, they're, they're hidden in plain sight, just like the southern kingdom is hidden in plain sight. No one wants to recognize the nationality of the, of the whole nation of Yasharal, per se, the other nations, right? But this ten, this ten tribes doctrine that we're about to share with you is based on the things that they did to be expelled out of the land, brothers and sisters. For those of us out here who believe that Yahuwah, the Creator, is a God, stop. Unless you are indoctrinated with Ten Tribes Doctrine. Ten Tribes Doctrine is a doctrine that is against the Creator, and it supports God worship. So whether you are a Hebrew in a camp keeping the Shabbat, the biblical Shabbat, most people do it incorrectly still, but I say you're keeping the Shabbat the seventh day. So what you're doing is what Yahuwah did, the southern kingdom, Jerusalem. You acknowledge Yahuwah, but you still dealt with God worship. And then our Hebrew brothers and sisters who are trapped in Catholicism or sun worship, Sunday worship, you're, you're totally trapped in Ten Tribes Doctrine yourself because you deny Yahuwah as the creator and you love God worship. The beggarly elements of the least thing in God worship is what we know is as idolatry. That's the physical form of God worship. Crosses, Crescent moons, uh, rosary beads, cars, whatever you use as a form of worshiping and praising, that is idolatry. The highest form of idolatry is God worship, which again, we teaching the mark of the beast. The system is a God worshiping system. The Ten Tribes doctrine is in line with the mark of the beast. So we cannot come out of this chaos, this darkness, if we do not understand the mark of the beast and how it also incorporated the ten tribes and then later incorporated the two tribes. So the whole nation has rebelled against Yahuwah, the creator. I didn't say Yahuwah, the God, Yahuwah, the El. I said Yahuwah, 
the creator. So we have a lesson, God versus creator, part one through part four. Before you comment on this lesson, go watch that lesson, and then you can understand our mission is that we do not teach God. We know who God is. We don't worship God. But we're going to let you know the danger in worshiping God, how I'm going to show you through scriptures today, how the ten tribes fell <clears throat> victim to God worship, brothers and sisters. So ask yourself when you're done with this lesson, hey, are you a God worshiper or not? That's what I want you to ask yourself when you're done, when we're done with this lesson, brothers and sisters. So again, Ten Tribes Doctrine, the sins of Ephraim and Yahuda that got us cut off from the Creator is because we love to worship demons, devils, God is what it is. Mm -hmm. So let's start this off, Akiah, in 1 <clears throat> Kings chapter 1. 11, I'm sorry, 1 Kings 11. Because let's look at the beginning wholesale with the sins of Solomon, one of the wisest men that worked the, walked the planet of the earth, but yet got caught up in his flesh with promoting God worship, brothers and sisters. First Kings chapter 11, verse 1. I can get that go ahead. Verse 1. Uh -huh. However, King Solomon loved many of Many other foreign women besides the daughters of Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Women from the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Phoenicians, or Sidonians, and Hittites. Go ahead. From the very nations Yahuwah had commanded the children of Yasharal, you must not marry them, and they must not marry you, because they will turn your turn away your heart after their gods or their Elohims. To these Solomon clung in love. So I'm not here to dispute uh, interracial marriages. Yahuwah said, hey, if you have a woman or a man that you engage to, you want to love and marry, and, and, you, and they are a God worshiper, and you are a Yahuwah worshiper, eh, it ain't going to work. But this is what Solomon did. He set the stage because he married all these other nations, and they had their gods. They had their idols. They worshiped what was not the creator. So now he's beginning to open the door for ten tribe sins. Of Ephraim and Yahuda. Right? Skip down verse 9. Verse 9. Uh -huh. So Yahuwah became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from Yahuwah, the father of Yasharal, who had appeared to him twice uh -huh. and who had commanded him about this very thing, not to go after the hinder gods or Elohims. But he did not obey what Yahuwah had commanded. Wait a minute. So, brothers and sisters, the hinder God. I know your Bible says other gods. Scratch it out. That's an adjective to give you a different perspective that the creator is a God because in our in our stupidity, we're taught to be stupid to say God is the creator because the main character in your scriptures is supposed to be Yahuwah, the creator who man's through man's tradition. We got a lesson on that too. Mm -hmm. The traditions of man have blotted out the name of Yahuwah. The traditions of man have given you a secondary purpose to worship God. So in your King James Version, where it should be Yahuwah, they got God and Lord right there for the most part, brothers and sisters. You got to wake up and see this, right? So Solomon angered Yahuwah by breaking the first three commandments, right? The royal law, Exodus 20. He says that don't make a God, don't bow down to a God, and don't take the name of Yahuwah to bring it to nothing or in vain. Mm -hmm. Right? Continue, huh? Verse 11. Uh -huh. Because of this, Yahuwah said to Solomon, Since you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your subject. Hey, he said, I'm going to tear the kingdom away from you and I'm going to give it to your subject. Remember, Solomon had a son who's going to inherit two tribes, mm -hmm. technically, and his servant is going to inherit the ten tribes. And this is where the ten tribes really go crazy mm -hmm. with God worship, with idolatry. And we see it today. Remember, brothers and sisters, if you understand the mark of the beast that we talk, it's about the big picture. It's about understanding that we have always seen the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Right here, Solomon is given over the children of Yasharal to the mark of the beast. Yes. The mark of the beast is what? God worship. Mm -hmm. It's a system. Right? So hey, the Ten Tribes doctrine is based on the mark of the beast, which is a system geared to teaching you demonic worship. Mm -hmm. Be 
because God is the devil, brothers and sisters, and angels are demons and devils also. Mm -hmm. So now, skip down, right? Mm -hmm. 29, let's pick it up right there. Because <clears throat> the kingdom was rent, read, go back and read this for yourself, but the kingdom was rent, and Thomas and Sons going to get two tribes, and real uh, Yerba going to get ten tribes, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what the prophet says. Go ahead. Verse 29. Uh -huh. And it was about this time that Yerboam went out of Jerusalem and met Ahiah, the Shilonite, the prophet, along the way. Hey, Ahiah! In your King James Version, I just, I just want to clarify this right quick. Mm -hmm. Put the prophet name in perspective correctly. A-H-I-Y-A-H. Mm -hmm. Ahiah. Because the prophet comes in Yah's name. Yes, that's right? right. So, hey, that tells you right there that they're trying to hide something mm -hmm. from you. Oh, brother, that's just the translation. Okay, it's the translation, but now, A-E-I-O-U, sometimes what? Y. Y. So let's drop the I and put the Y back where it belongs to show the marker of Yahoo. But continue, y'all. Ahia was wearing a new talent, uh -huh. and the two were alone in the country. Then Ahia took hold of the new talent he was wearing and tore it into 12 pieces. Uh huh. So that new garment in the King James Version is a talent, brothers and sisters, a prayer shawl, right? Mm -hmm. But continue. Verse 31. Uh huh. Then he said to Yerboam, Take for yourselves ten pieces, because this is what Yahuwah, the father of Yasharal, says. Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hands of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. Uh -huh. But he kept one tribe for the sake of my servant Daoud, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city I have chosen out of all the tribes of Yasharal. I will do this because they have forsaken me, and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Phoenicians, or Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of El of the Moabites, and Milcom or Molech, the god of El, or El, of the people of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as Dawood, his father, did. Hey, they got in trouble. Solomon got in trouble because he wanted to worship God, El, Elohim, Lord, Lord God, Baal, Asherah, Chemosh, all these gods. So now... We're, we're ashamed of it, so we don't say all those names no more. We just incorporate it under the umbrella of the word or the name or the title, God. God. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, Elohim is God. El is God. The Lord is God. Hey, go back and read the royal law. Understand why Yahuwah is mad at Solomon because there's none like Yahuwah, the creator in the universe. Mm -hmm. Don't worship nothing else but me. That's right. So when you say hallelujah, you praise Yahuwah the creator. Mm -hmm. But when you say oh man, <laughs> Asherah, Baal, oh Lord, you have just defiled that praise in yourself because now you incorporate a God next to Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So understand what we're saying, that the Ten Tribes Doctrine is solely based on God worship, brothers and sisters. So those Hebrews who are trapped in in, in camps and in Sunday worship in churches are Ephraim and Manasseh doctrinized people, mm -hmm. right? Where are we at? Verse 37. Go ahead. And I will take you, and you shall reign over all that your heart desires. You shall be king over Yasharal. Uh -huh. And it shall be, if you will listen to all that I command you and will walk in my ways and do that which is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my laws, just as Daoud my servant did, then I will be with you and build you an enduring house as I built for Daoud and will give Yasharal to you. Hey, so this is Yeroboam, right? A descendant of Ephraim, mm -hmm. right? It's, he has bloodline to Ephraim, who is the son of Yahusa, who is the son of Yasharal, the father of the twelve patriarchs. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom would have been in good hands of ten tribes, but again, we fall victim to our flesh. The devil, God, can only work can only work with us through our flesh. That's how he works. So, but we're gonna see this. But we'll continue, y'all. Okay. That was it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go into First Kings the twelve chapter because now we're gonna look at what Jeroboam has done because now Yahuwah have given him the opportunity to be king over ten tribes, but he wants to hold on forever, and now he's going to begin to allow God worship to lead and guide the ten tribes into destruction, brothers and sisters. So they're going to they're worship on, on Sundays. They're going to worship on Mondays. They're going to worship on Tuesdays. They're going to worship on Wednesdays. They're going to worship every other week, but what day? But this actual Shabbat. Because mm -hmm. why? That's Yahuwah Shabbat. 
We don't worship on Yahuwah Shabbat. And if we do, as we do now, as the two tribes of the southern kingdom, we are brothers and sisters. Are you talking about the floating Shabbat? That's ten tribes doctrine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to worship all the days of the week except the true Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we're looking at where our brothers and sisters are caught in Catholicism, which is still based on ten tribe doctrine. Right? It is the walking away from Yahuwah, not to serve Yahuwah according to the letter of his law, which everybody got a Bible. Everybody got a Bible, mm -hmm. and the law's in your Bible, but no, we ain't gonna do that old, those old laws. Why not? That's what Yahuwah is looking at for you to perfect yourself. But Yerboam decided that, hey, I'm gonna take over. I'm not gonna use the instructions of Yahuwah anymore. I'm gonna do it my way. Ten, ten tribes doctrine. Mm -hmm. when we see our brothers and sisters out there doing it their own way, right? right? First Kings 12, verse 25. How can you get there? Go ahead. Verse 25. Uh-huh. Then Yeroboam of Yasharal built up Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim uh -huh. and lived there. From there he went out and built up Penuel. Yeroboam thought to himself. Wait a minute. To who? Himself. To himself. Go ahead. Now this kingdom will revert to the house of Dahu. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem, the allegiance of this people will return to their ruler, Rehoboam, king of Yehuda. Wait a minute. What you worried about is, uh, bro, Yahuwah just told you he gave it to you. You're not going to lose it. Why? Because Yahuwah gave it to you. Right. If Yahuwah didn't give it to you, then you have reason to worry. But Yahuwah gave it to you. Don't worry about what's going on in Jerusalem. Just do the letter of the law in the land like he told you to do. But the law says everybody got to come down to Jerusalem three times out of the year mm -hmm. to worship and praise Yahuwah by mm -hmm. the law. We'll continue, y'all. Huh? Verse 27. Uh -huh. If these people go up to the offer sacrifices in the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem, the allegiance of this people will return to their ruler, Rehoboam, king of Yehuda. They will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Yehuda. Not going to happen, but in your flesh, Satan is pricking you in your flesh and now he got your attention, and you finna go but crazy, pretty much, right? Because you don't want to worship your whore, because now you want to do your own devices. Let's stop. Let's just do the devices of your whore. Continue, huh? 28. Uh -huh. Because of this, the king accepted counsel and advice, and made two circular golden altars, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Your gods, or Elohim, are here. Oh, Yasharal, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. Wait a minute. Your gods, these barely idols, right? Which the law says, don't make a god, don't bow down to a god. And what did he just do? He made a god out of these circular altars to represent the moon and the sun, right? And got the people to worship on these altars when they should be going down to Jerusalem to worship Yahuwah, the creator. Go ahead. 29. Uh huh. And he set up one high place in Bethel, and the other he set up in Dan. Wait a minute. And he set up the one high place in Bethel, which means the house of God, not the house of Yahuwah. And he set up the other one in Dan, which the name Dan means judge. So the prophet Dan Yahu means the judge of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Right? Continue. Verse 30. Uh huh. This thing became a sin. Because the people went as far as Dan to worship before the one. Wait a minute. This, this altar worship, this idolatry worship, this God worship became sin. Sin is in your Bibles, 1 John 3 and 4, whoso break the law commits sin, for sin is the breaking of the law. And in the first four commandments in the royal law, either in Exodus 20 or Deuteronomy 5, we're told not to worship God, right? Mm -hmm. The whole book is telling you don't worship God. So why you call it our Father God, El Elohim, mm -hmm. Lord? Mm -hmm. He has a name, Yahuwah. If you got the name, then purge all the titles other than Father, the Mighty One, the Holy One, you know, creator. To, the Creator, mm -hmm. the Eternal One, mm -hmm. right? But use His name with those titles. Don't use His name with those other God idols titles, right? Mm -hmm. But continue, huh? Verse 31. Ten tribes, doctrines, the sins of Ephraim and Yahuda. Go ahead. 31. Uh -huh. Yerboam built the houses with high places uh -huh. and anointed priests from every class of people who were not of the sons of Levi. So we see this today. This ten tribe doctrine that is part of the mark of the beast that we see in brothers rise up and building uh, established cathedrals and, and monuments and giant churches and they are making people priests of the Lord's estate that are not Levites. You know, you might you might be a little angry. Well, you ain't a Levite. I'm not saying I was. But the whole point is this. 
we have to understand that those of us who are going to sit in Moshe's seat got to do what Moshe did according to the word of Yahuwah. That's right. Right? Keep the law. So, obviously, Jeroboam was supposed to sit in the seat of Moshe, and he's not doing what Yahuwah said. Right? Hmm. So, hey, we see that Jeroboam was making priests, making teachers, making pastors, making reverends, making Pharisees, making Sadducees out of the Lord's estate. So usually the Lord's estate of the people are the common people most in these days, they were uneducated. Mm -hmm. So they had to follow the directions of the king, right? But the priest was educated because he had the knowledge of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So when you're worshiping a God, then that means that you are now making yourself common to Yahuwah. You are the lowest esteem of the people when you worship gods. Whether idols or the fallen demons and devils who we call angels. Hey, brothers and sisters, don't get caught up. Don't stay in 10 tribes doctrines, the sin of Ephraim and Yehuda and God worship. Continue, huh? Verse 32. Uh-huh. You're born ordained a feast of the 15th day. Wait a minute. He ordained a feast. Yahuwah already had a feast, but he's going to do something different. That's what everybody does under the Ten Tribe Doctrine. And they said, well, you know, we know the man of sin, 666, is going to change times and laws. Hey, you did it first. Mm. You did it first, Yashara. Right? So he says that, and you're born ordained a feast on the 15th day of what moon? Of the 8th moon. And Yahuwah did it in the 7th moon, but go ahead. Like the feast held in Yehuda. Uh -huh. And he offered on the altar as he did in Bethel. Sacrificing on the go on the circular golden altar he had made, and at Bethel he also installed the priests of the high places which he had built. Uh, he built, well, not ordained by Yahuwah, because he built it for what? God worship, for El worship, for Elohim worship, for Baal worship, for the Lord worship, for the Lord God worship, for Asherah's worship, for uh, Kibos worship, for just basically. Satan, God, the devil worship, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Continue, y'all. Huh? Verse 33. Uh -huh. So he offered sacrifices on the altar he built in Bethel. On the 14th day of the 8th moon. On the 15th day. On the 15th day of the 8th moon, in the moon he had ordained in his own heart. His own heart. There he ordained a feast for the children of Yasharal and offered sacrifice on the altar and burned incense. So when you say Yahuwah is an El Elohim, that's coming from your own heart or from the heart of someone who has set up an institution of worship and telling you this is what that is because they don't want to really worship Yahuwah. But because the people are waking up to the name of Yahuwah, mm -hmm. they still want to incorporate God worship. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to 2 Kings 17. And this is what got your butt thrown into captivity, the ten tribe brethren, right? But Yahuwah going to follow right along because they're going to say, yeah, we know Yahuwah too, but we still want to do some of this God worship over here. Stop, brothers and sisters. God is your enemy. God is your adversary. Anything that has the word or title God, flee from it, fight against it to purify your understanding in your father, the creator, Yahuwah, if you accept him as your father. If not, then you are going to be caught up in ten tribes doctrine still, and which are the sins of Ephraim and Yahuda, and you are not going to make it into the kingdom. You're only going to make it to the lake of fire. Simple as that, right? Second Kings 17, let's pick it up at verse 5, because we want to see the ten tribes going into captivity, being plucked up out of the land, because they love to worship God in the land versus Yahuwah, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead, uh, verse 5. Uh -huh. Then the king of Assyria invaded all the land, advanced upon Samaria, and besieged it for three years. Uh -huh. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and carried the inhabitants of Yashar all the way to Assyria. Okay, so Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, or the ten tribes. Go ahead. The king of Assyria settled them in Halak by the Tabor River in Gozan in the city of the Medes. Uh -huh. All these things came to pass because the children of Yasharal had sinned against Yahuwah their father, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt, by worshiping and serving him to God. Uh -huh. Go ahead. They had walked in the statues of the heathen, which Yahuwah had driven out from in front of the children of Yasharal, and in the ways of the king of, of Yasharal. So what are heathen? Heathen just means you're pagan. Pagan means what? That you are a God worshiper, right? So a lot of your traditions you think are worthy and, and they're supported by a false doctrine by the Bible. Because there's a lesson that we did. Mm -hmm. 
Christian Bible work justified, Christ, false Christian work justified by the Bible, mm -hmm. right? So, no one's going to tell you that they are devil worshiper. But they tell you, I'm a God worshiper because they taught you to accept God, mm -hmm. right? But Yahuwah is not God, a God, or El. We'll continue. Making them commit sin. Making you commit sin under the banner of God worship. God worship is sin, brothers and sisters. Are you a God worshiper or do you worship Yahuwah in truth, righteousness, holiness, and sincerity? Right? Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9. For the children of Yasharah did deceitful and treacherous things against Yahuwah their father that were not right. Uh huh. But they built high places and all. They built churches. Go ahead. In all their cities. From the watchtower to the fortified city, uh -huh. they set up sacred pillars or master balls representing the god of El Baal. Go ahead. And wooden sacred poles or ashram representing the goddess Elohim, Astra, Ishtar, or Easter. Hey, you love Easter because your, 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 your son of God resurrected on Easter, which Easter is based on the goddess of fertility, which is all about bunny rabbits and Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, we got a lesson. What should you do? Easter or Passover? Come on, y'all. We're trying to help. Check out our information. Study it, please. Because Yahuwah is beginning to call for real his service. And I know a lot of us don't have the right information. We've been stuck in God worship. Hey, we don't worship God. We don't serve God. We used to do it like everybody else did out of ignorance. Right. But Yahuwah said, hey, I got a job for you. I'm going to clean you up. And I want you to preach my word, teach my word, share the information with the people mm -hmm. so that they can begin to fight against God. Oh, God, I wish you. Mm -hmm. Continue, huh? On every hill, on every high hill, and under every spreading tree. Uh huh. At each of their high places, they burned incense, just as the nations had done. Uh huh. Whom Yahuwah had driven out from in front of the children of Yasharal. There they performed great evil, provoking Yahuwah to anger. Wait a minute, we're talking about the ten tribes, right? That's why it's called the ten tribes doctrine. Don't do what the ten tribes have done, but we're doing it wholesale under the mark of the beast. Because the mark of the beast is not so much the 666, it is the worshiping system of God, not the creator. So ten tribes doctrines, the sins of Ephraim don't do these sins, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But Yahuda gonna see it too, and they're gonna do the same doggone <laughs> thing. Right. right? So in your camps, you are worshiping God on the Shabbat. Because you love Yahweh, you love the Lord, you love Elohim. See, that's 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 the southern kingdom's plight. You know, they will they'll deal with some of Yahuwah's name. But they won't deal with the, the, the law per se. Mm -hmm. Just like the ten tribes, they won't deal with the name or the law. Mm -hmm. Right? So what what do the southern kingdom do? They just mispronounce the creator's name. Well, it's Yahweh. Well, as we study, there is no W in Hebrew. Right. All right? You know? So how can you say Yahweh or Yahweh? There's no W in Hebrew. Right? Well continue, huh? Verse 12. Uh -huh. But they served and worshiped the gods of Elohim. Doing this even though Yahuwah had commanded them, you shall not do this thing. Uh -huh. Yet, Yahuwah testified and warned Yasharal and Yehuda. Wait a minute. He warned both of them, right? Mm -hmm. The sins of uh, Ephraim and Yehuda. Hey, stop dealing with the ten tribes doctrine and deal with the doctrine of the creator Yahuwah, your Yahabi, or your father. Continue. Yet, Yahuwah testified and warned Yasharal and Yehuda uh -huh. through all of his prophets and by every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways. Keep my commandments and my statutes according to the law that I commanded your fathers to obey and which I sent to you by my servants the prophet. But you was what? Go ahead. However, they would not listen. They became as stiff-necked and stubborn as their fathers who did not believe in Yahuwah their father. See, we don't want to believe totally in Yahuwah today. Oh, we love the name Yahuwah because that's the true creator's name. But he's our Lord. No, he's not. Just stop that creator. Because he's the father, right? But it gets worse, right? It gets worse. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 15. Uh -huh. They rejected Yahuwah's statutes and his covenant that he had made with their fathers. They rejected his testimonies, which he had sent to warn them. Instead, they followed the gods of Elohim and became God worshipers, worshipers of Elohim. They followed the ways of the nations all around them, whom Yahuwah had commanded them, do not do as they do. You want to be in everybody's church. You want to be in everybody's doctrine. You want to worship everybody's God. Stop, Yasharal. Stop. 
Serve your whore only. Turn back to his laws, statutes, and judgment. You know, you know what kind of burns me up is, is when we protest. And, and I'm just saying, you know, the people that do the Black Lives Matter thing, it, it's, it looks like it's a very good thing. But we're not black. We're not colored. We're not Negroes. Those are by words. We're the brave. We're the house of Yasharal. If you leave with Yahuwah, he will be your champion. But if you deny Yahuwah because you refuse Yahuwah and you don't know Yahuwah, then you are stuck in Ten Tribes Doctrine and the enemy looks like your friend, but he's beating you upside your head. Hmm. Stop, Yasharal. Come on, Ephraim. Come on, Yahuda. Let's serve Yahuwah together. Continue, uh huh? Verse 16. Uh huh. They forsook all the laws of Yahuwah their father, and they made for themselves two projected circular altars. They made an Asherah pole, the sacred pole, for setting their feast by the sun. And worship all the hosts of heaven, and they worship Baal, or the Lord. Okay, so you read the rest of this on your own. But, hey, they 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 make their own feast day. Mm -hmm. We saw that with your poem, right? Let's go to, to, to the pocket. Let's go to 2 Ezra, right? Because it's all over the place, right? And nobody wants you to be able to get this information correct. But we need to get this information correct. So if you don't have an apocrypha, invest in one. It's more information that needs to be given. So we're going to 2 Ezra, which is the prophet Ezra, chapter 2, right? Or chapter 13. Let's read verses 40 and 43. 40 through 43. Go ahead. Verse 40. Uh huh. And as for you seeing him gather about himself another multitude that was peaceable. These are the ten tribes that in the days of King Hoshea were carried away from their own land into captivity whom Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, made captives and carried beyond the river. Okay, so what river? The river of the Medes. What are the Medes or who are the Medes? They're the ancient empire of Persia. Today, they are Iran. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for some of the ten tribes, just go and look in Iran. Look in that area, basically. That's good right there, huh? Let's, let's go to let's go to Psalms 137. Because they're out here by the river of, of Babylon. And what is this river incorporated in Babylon? We're gonna find out in Psalms 137. Like I say, brothers and sisters, archaeologists and occult ties, we gotta dig for this information. Become an archaeologist. Dig for the truth. Don't stop at the first, second, third level. Dig for the truth. That you may be reconciled back to Yah be Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. But Psalms 137. So when the ten tribes went into captivity, they were told, hey, sing us some of those old spiritual so-called Negro songs, right? Let's see what they saying here at Psalms 137. When you get there, I'll pick it up at verse 1. Verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon... There we sat down. Uh huh. Yes, we wept when we remembered Zion. So when they remember Zion, they wept. Like, man, we been bogus against Yahuwah all this time. Now he brings the belt on us by the king of Assyria. Doc Hoshia came down, took him into captivity, and started invading the land and bringing us up out of our land way over to the far east by the rivers of Babylon. Go ahead. Verse 2. Uh huh. On willows in the middle of Babylon, we hung our heart. Uh huh. But there our captors asked of us the words of a song, and our plunderers requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of those, one of the songs of Zion. Hey, sing us one of those spiritual Negroes. Go ahead. Oh, how could we sing the song of Yahuwah in a strange land? Hey, when you were in the land, you didn't sing it. So why you want to, why you want to sing it now in captivity? Mm -hmm. Right? But in that Ezra chapter 2, verse 13, they said, hey, they took us by the rivers of, of, of Babylon, basically. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But hey, let's put the, the precepts together. Let's dig for the information. Let's clarify what we're supposed to worship versus what we think we should worship, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Hoshea chapter 13. Because the sins of Ephraim, the sins of Yahuda, or simply the sins of Samaria and Yerushalayim, brothers and sisters. The ten tribe doctrine got us jacked up. Because our brothers out here on the street corners and in the Sunday churches and in the sabbatical camps are still dealing with God worship and they are denying Yahuwah's name and they're teaching us to bow down to Baal. 
Adonai Baal means Lord, brothers and sisters. So unless you've written mm. and your and your land or your land Lord mm. is your land Lord, then give him that title. Right. But the Creator, He says, "Nothing like me in the universe. Don't degrade me, brothers right. and sisters. Don't mess my name up by adding God elements to my name because I'm not a God, right?" But let's go ahead. Hoshea 13, verse 1 and 2. Hoshea 13, uh, 13 go ahead, I'm sorry. Verse 1. Uh -huh. When Ephraim spoke, trembling, he, ex he exalted himself in Yasharal. But when he offered by worshiping Baal, the Lord, he died. Wait a minute. So when he decided to not worship Yahuwah no more, Ephraim, the ten tribes doctrine, right? They don't worship Yahuwah, right? They, 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 they want to do everything with God and Lord. But Yahuwah said, when you accept the Lord or God or the devil or Satan, you shall die first spiritually, then you're going to die physically. Mm -hmm. Don't die in your sins because there is no more work to be done to re correct it. Mm -hmm. Right? Once you die in your sins and God worship, your next step is to be resurrected and get to the lake of fire. Because mm -hmm. now the law is going to judge against you. Simple as that, brothers and sisters. Tell your teachers to teach you the truth. Don't make up stories like your your boy did because they got an agenda. Mm -hmm. Continue, huh? Verse two. Uh huh. And now the sin and now they sin more and more. They are made gods, Elohims and teraphim, for themselves from their silver, gods, Elohims, according to their own understanding. All of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let those who offer human sacrifice on the altars kiss the gods, or Elohim. Hey, if you were read back in in that uh. Uh, 2 Kings 17, the next verse that we left off at, mm -hmm. they were they were they were burning their kids in the fire. Mm -hmm. I gotta, it got worse, right? But today we're still doing some of those same old ten tribes doctrine practices. We're denying Yahuwah, we're denying the law, we are worshiping gods, we are making things up as we go, mm -hmm. but we're gonna use some scriptures to trick people into coming into our, our understanding so that we can be rulers over the people, right? Let's go to Yeshaya chapter 10. Because it, 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 it got to end eventually, but you all want this thing to end with everybody with the knowledge to protect themselves against the wrath of the Lamb when he comes back with the mindset of Yahuwah to destroy all things that offend in the kingdom, right? Yeshaya or Isaiah 10, verse 5. Uh, when you get there, go ahead. Verse 5. Because we're still at odds with each other, of course, but go ahead. Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger. In whose hand is the staff of my indignation? Wait a minute. So who are the Assyrians used for by Yahuwah as a rod, as a belt? To who? To Ephraim and Yahuda, because they sinned against Yahuwah and we need a whooping. Mm -hmm. So the whooping was coming by the hands of the Assyrians. They were beating us down, right? Just like today, the nation still beat us down. Why? Because we're not serving Yahuwah, we're serving their gods. Right. And their gods are the imagination of their own hearts. So if you are trying to be in everybody's doctrine, everybody's religion, mm -hmm. everybody's church, then you deserve what you get when they bust you upside your head for worshiping their God and not your creator to follow. Mm -hmm. You're the priest nation. You're supposed to be doing this because you hate Yahuwah. For the worship of God, you deny Yahuwah. Right. Simple as that, right? Go ahead, Ron. Verse 6. Uh -huh. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge uh -huh. to take the plunder, to take the prey, and to tread them down like mud in the streets. Wow. So you always say, I'm so mad at my children in the house of Yashara. I'm going to bring the nations against them, especially in Syria, and he's going to smash you for me. See, people say, well, I don't want to serve that old creator. He's too harsh. He's not harsh. He's just stern. Mm -hmm. You're the one that decided to do flip willy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that, Yahuwah says. Right? Okay, then your fathers made the covenant. Though you weren't there, you still part of the covenant. Mm -hmm. If our fathers were given all the riches, will you not benefit from the riches today? Mm -hmm. So you got the curse, so deal with the curse. And start serving your whore so you can scale it back. Skip down to verse 10. I'll go ahead. Verse 10. Uh huh. As my hand found the kingdoms of the gods, all the kingdoms whose carved images excel those of Jerusalem and of Samaria. Hey, remember. Yahuwah said, I have founded these kingdoms to be God-worshipping kingdoms. And because Yahuwah and Ephraim want to worship God, go over there and worship them. 
But I know when you go, I'm going to make sure that it's hard for you to deal with. Mm -hmm. Right? So we don't have no rights, technically. We think we're free. We're not. We're not in our own land. We don't have our own government. We don't have our own flag. We don't have our own constitution. We're waiting on Yahushua, the king and priest, sent by Yahuwah to set these things back in order for the ten tribes with the bad doctrines, the sins of Ephraim and Yehuda, or the sins of Samaria and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. All right, continue, huh? Verse 11. Uh -huh. Can I not deal with Jerusalem and her gods or her Elohims as I dealt with Samaria and her gods and her Elohim? Uh-huh. That's it. Let's go into uh, Yirmiyahu. We got one more. We'll wrap it up. Yirmiyahu 7. Can I see what the southern kingdom did? Yehuda, Jerusalem did before Yahuwah, right? Yahu or Jeremiah chapter 7, and pick it up at verse 8 when you get there. Uh, go ahead. Verse 8. Uh -huh. But behold, you trust in lying words. You trust in lying words. That are worthless. The worthless. Will you steal, uh -huh. murder, commit adultery, vow falsely, burn incense to Baal or the Lord, follow him to God, the Elohim you know nothing of? And then come and stand before me in this house, upon which my name is called and say, we are saved. Saved to do all these abominations. Wait a minute. You think you can go to your high places and come back and worship Yahuwah in his name and say I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost? You are fooling yourself. Why? Because that's your own imagination. Mm -hmm. That's your own imagination. Go ahead, Art. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Has this house, which is called with my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I have seen this, says Yahuwah. Uh -huh. But now go, if you will, to my place which was in Shiloh, where I first set my name and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people, Yasharah. Uh -huh. And now, because you have done all these works, says Yahuwah, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, I will do to this house, which is called with my name, the place in which you trust, the place I provided for you and your fathers before you, just as I did to Shiloh. Hey, go ahead. And I will cast you out of my sight, just as I have cast out all your brothers, the whole seed of Ephraim. Why he cast out the whole seed of Ephraim? Because of their ten tribe doctrine of God worship, brothers and sisters. Hey, Yahuwah don't care about you worshiping him in truth and righteousness. He care about you not worshiping him in truth and righteousness. Because if you want to bring the beggarly elements of God worship to his doorstep, he will mess you up. We are evidence today. As the people scatter, we are messed up. Why? Because we didn't hold true to the law of Yahuwah to worship him only. And we brought in the biblical elements of God worship, right? So, while you're in your houses of God, he says this. Yemi Yahu, chapter 44, verse 24. Uh, when you get there, go ahead. Verse 24. Uh-huh. Yemi Yahu also said to all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of Yahuwah, all Yehuda who are in the land of Egypt. This is what Yahuwah of hosts, the father of Yasharal, said. Uh -huh. You have spoken with your mouths and fulfilled your promises with your hands, saying, we will, we will surely perform our vows that we have made to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour our drink offerings to her. To your Easter goddess, you want to worship her with your hot cross buns and everything. Go ahead. So you will surely fulfill your vows and perform it. And you are doing it this very day. Go ahead. But hear the word of Yahuwah, all Yadim who fellowship with the wicked inhabitants of the house of God. Or Bethel, go ahead. Behold, I have vowed with my great name, says Yahuwah. That never again will my name be called in the mouths of any man of Yehuda who fellowships with all the, in, the wicked inhabitants of the house of God, saying, As surely as Yahuwah lives. Behold, I will watch over them for their harm and not for their welfare. All the men of Yehuda who fellowship with the wicked inhabitants of the house of God will be consumed by the sword and by famine until they have been destroyed. So, hey, go ahead. Yet a small number who escaped the sword will return from the wicked inhabitants of the house of God. To the land of Yehuda, then all the remnant of Yehuda who went to the house of God or El or Elohim to congregate there will find out whose word stands, mine's or theirs. So whose word stands today? Did our father's word stand today that it's okay to worship God in the land? Or did Yahuwah's word stand sure that if you worship God in the land, you don't get kicked out? And that while you are in your captivity, you will no longer be able to say his name in your churches or your camps. So what they teach in the church in the camp, nobody knows the creator's name. Right. Oh, well, the creator who they call God got many names. Now, Yahuwah said, I'm not going to lie, you to speak my name. 
Because you don't want to worship me. You don't want to praise me. You don't want to give me the honor and the glory due to my name. So the best, the best, the best you can do is say in your church or your camp is what? Hallelujah. That's the best you can do. So now, those of us that wake you up to the name of Yahuwah, stop hollering Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah the Lord. Because again, he's going to bust you down, brothers and sisters. So with that, with the Ten Tribes Doctrine, the sin of Ephraim and Yahuda. I hope someone got some understanding of Yahusha's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.